Hello. Welcome to our first session of Spirit of Truth, book two. And we're going to be preparing now for the very great gift of your reception of Holy Communion and Confirmation, these two great sacraments. And so we have to ask God for his help because this will be one of the most important days of your entire life. And we want to make sure that you are well prepared for it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to learn about you and to receive your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our own bodies through the Holy Eucharist, this unimaginably great gift that you give us at every Holy Mass. Help us to be worthy of this great sacrament. And we pray that our hearts will be open to receiving also the sacrament of confirmation, the full anointing of your Holy Spirit, that we may become the people that you created us to be, those who you have seen from all eternity, what was our particular mission on the earth, Heavenly Father. And so we ask you now, we pray the prayer that your son Jesus taught us, and we ask that you would bless each one of us with a great zeal for doing your will, which is to make us happy for all eternity. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And now we ask our blessed mother to take all of, all of us into her immaculate motherly heart, that she would protect us from every assault of Satan and the evil spirits, that she would protect our souls and keep them always within the heart of her son, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And now, since this first lesson is on the Blessed Trinity, we will pray that what's called the doxology. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. All you holy angels and saints, especially Saint Joseph and our guardian angels, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, so uh, you can be following me either from your book or from your computer screen, whichever is easier for you. But if you're following from the book, you would be on page one now, and you would see this image that is also being shown on the screen. And I'm going to read, I want you to look at the image while I read to you from the Gospel of St. Mark, the account of the baptism of Jesus. Jesus was baptized when he was 30 years old with St. John the Baptist's baptism, which was not a sacrament like you receive, but it was a sign of repentance. And Jesus obviously did not need to be baptized because he's sinless and he's God. He's He's the second person of the Trinity with a perfect human nature. But listen now and see if you can identify the different characters who are being spoken of in the Gospel of St. Mark. And, and it came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And immediately on coming up from the water, he saw the heavens opened and the spirit as a dove descending and remaining upon him. And there came a voice from the heavens, thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. So here in the gospel of St. Mark, we hear of the great event that occurred, which is called a theophany. Whenever all three persons of the Blessed Trinity are made manifest, it's called a theophany. And so in this image, we see the artist trying to portray that. So he's portraying God the Father as the elderly man dressed in blue at the top of the screen. Okay, and I'd like to just make a comment about that, that 
artists often make this error in in drawing the father as if he was an old man, but it's not really correct according to what Jesus taught us, that God is three persons and they are co-eternal, which means they have no beginning. It wasn't like first there was God, then there was the Son, then there was the Holy Spirit. God has always existed as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so the Father is neither older nor younger than the Son and the Holy Spirit. They're, they're co-eternal. But that's just the artist's way of trying to convey the mystery. And then we see the Holy Spirit above the head of Jesus appearing as a dove. I don't know if you can see that in the image, but the dove is typically considered to be an image of God, the Holy Spirit, because it reflects back to Genesis. If you remember the story of Noah and the ark, at the time there was so much sin in the world that God said, you know, we, we just need to start over again and give people a new chance to begin. And so he called Noah to build this huge boat called an ark. And he said, take into the boat to a pair, a male and a female of each of the animals, and also bring your wife, and your three sons and their wives into the ark. And so he brought them into the ark and then God closed up the ark from the outside. And then he, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. It rained so much that the whole earth was flooded and every living creature, except for the fish, I mean, all the, all the creatures that lived on the land died. And so the symbol that the flood was over and it was safe for them to come out of the ark was that Noah had sent a dove out of the ark and, um, and the dove flew back to him with an olive branch in its beak. And so he knew that that meant the flood waters had receded off the earth and it was safe to come out of the ark. And so that's why sometimes you might've heard people say, well, I'm offering you an olive branch. That means an offer of peace. But the Holy Spirit is coming in the form of a dove because he wants to remind us of that, that there's going to be peace now between heaven and earth because of Jesus. The heavens were opened. Remember, the heavens were closed when Adam and Eve committed the first original sin. But here comes Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, the Savior of the world, the only one worthy enough to offer a sacrifice by which he could reverse what Adam and Eve, the damage Adam and Eve had done. Okay, so when you're, we'll, we'll now go on to the next screen. So you can click done if you're doing um, it on the computer and then click go home. Okay, if um, you're doing it from your book, just turn to the next page. Okay, and we will click on this icon about the Trinity. And here we have some explanation about the Blessed Trinity. I'm going to read part of this to you, and I'm go but I'm going to stop in between and explain some things to you that I think it would be important for you to understand. God the Father sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world. Jesus taught us about God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. Jesus showed us that God is a trinity. He is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Trinity means three in one. So to say that God is a trinity means that he is three persons in one God. Now, I want to stop there for a minute because I want to teach you that persons does not mean the same thing as people. So it would be false to say that there are three people in God. It's true to say that there are three persons in God. And now I'm going to explain to you what is the difference. So a person is an individual substance of a rational nature. That means one who says, I, when you ask the question, who, this person can answer, I. And a person has the ability to think and to will. Now, there are three different types of persons. The most important persons are the three persons of the Blessed Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we refer to them as the three divine persons. Now, they are uncreated. What that means is they have no beginning. It's part of God's nature to exist. Like when God revealed his name to Moses, he said, I am who am. In other words, I am, I, I exist. 
and God has always existed. But, but then in order to share his love, not because he needed creatures, but just so that he could share the great love that he is, he created angels and people. So he created two different types of persons, created persons. First, the angelic persons, like each of us has our own guardian angel who is a person, an individual of a rational nature. So your guardian angel can think and can love. And then he, but angels don't have bodies. That's how they differ from human persons. And we are the human persons who are embodied spirits. So we are, our, our body is a complete, a completion of who we are as persons because we express ourselves through our bodies. So the Trinity is a great mystery of our faith. It's the highest mystery of our faith. A mystery is a truth that we can know only because God revealed it to us and Jesus revealed the Trinity to us. Now, I also have to tell you though that we never will come to the end of, we're never gonna to get to the point where we can say, now I understand the blessed Trinity. Now I've got it figured out. That's not gonna happen because the Trinity is an infinite mystery and we are finite. We, we're very small, even in eternity. I mean, we're gonna keep on learning about God and every new thing we learn is gonna be like a new delight to our souls. But, but we don't have the capacity to fully understand the mystery of the blessed Trinity. But that's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. So there's three important things to remember about the Trinity. First, we believe in one God. One God is three persons in one God. God the Father is the first person of the Trinity. God the Son is the second. And God the Holy Spirit is the third. And we commemorate all three persons every time we make the sign of the cross. And listen to the words because we don't say in the names S. We say in the name. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so in the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the persons of the Trinity are different from each other. They're unique. Each person of the Trinity is a unique person, yet each is God. Each is his own person. And we don't understand how that can be because in, in our experience of reality, I'm one human person with one human nature. And the same for you. But, but with God, there are three divine persons in one divine nature. The divine persons share love. The Trinity is like a family. The Father loves the Son, the Son loves the Father, and the Holy Spirit eternally proceeds or comes forth from their love. Therefore, we can say that God is love. Now, for those of you who are watching, um, doing this by video, I would recommend that you now pause the video to answer the questions on the next page. And um, those of you who are doing it from your book, you can go ahead and answer those questions. But I'm going to go on because assuming that there's a little bit of a break here to give you time to answer the questions. All right, and here are the answers. Jesus taught us about the Trinity. What does the word Trinity mean? Three and one. Who is not one of the persons of the Trinity? The saints. Okay, we know the three persons are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Son is the one who became a man. He took on a human nature in the womb of the Virgin Mary at the incarnation. And he, he took on a human nature so that he could redeem us because God can't suffer in his nature as God because it, it's an imperfection and, and God is complete perfection. But in order to be able to share with us um, our suffering and our death and to redeem that suffering and death, he took on a human nature and offered it to the Father on the cross. Okay, now this image, um, you can take some time to, you can pause the video and take some time to color it in. Um, the children who are doing it in their book, um, you have it in your book and it tells you the directions. I'm going to read the directions for those of you who are doing it by the computer. On the diagram of the Trinity, color the names of the three persons of the Trinity green. Okay, so that would be the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the three persons of the Trinity, you'd be coloring green. 
color is not blue, right? The three lines that you see saying is not because the Father is not the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is not the Son. The Father is, is not the Son. They're, they're individual persons. And so you would color those lines blue. And then color is, the lines that say is, red. The Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. And then color the name of God yellow to show his glory as God. Okay, so you can, um, you can work on that later on or now, whichever is preferable to you. But pause the video if you're going to do it now. Okay, and when, once you've finished it, you will click on done. Okay, and then go home. And um, you probably won't be able to go on to the next um, session until you click again on this session and um, take a picture of your diorama that you colored, or you can upload a picture of, of it onto your computer. But in order to go on to the next one, you'll have to take a picture. I'm, I'm just going to take a picture of the screen right now because I don't have the other thing to take a picture. Okay, and then click done. Okay, and then go home. Okay, then go on to the next one where you see an image of St. Augustine. Okay, and in here it tells you the story about St. Augustine. He lived a long time ago. He lived... Um, he actually died in the year 430, so he, he lived 1,600 years ago. And um, when he was a young man, he lived a very sinful life. But then through the prayers of his mother, St. Monica, who prayed very, very much for him, he heard the voice of God speaking to him through the scriptures one day. He actually was out in the yard, and he heard a, children were playing in the nearby yard, and one of them began to chant, take and read, take and read, take and read. And so he took that as God speaking to him through the voice of the child. And he picked up the New Testament that he had with him. And he opened to one of the letters of St. Paul, where it said, um, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and have no concern for the flesh. So in other words, he was able to, he realized that even though he couldn't overcome his sinful tendencies on his own, he could do it through Jesus Christ. And that was the moment of his conversion. And so he, he converted and he was baptized. And then he, was, he made his first Holy Communion and confirmation. And then he was ordained a priest. And then he was ordained a bishop. And he became one of the greatest teachers in the history of the Catholic Church. In fact, today, if you have a copy of the Catechism of the Catholic Church, which you probably um, might have a copy in your home. If not, I can certainly get a copy for your family. This Catechism, St. Augustine is quoted in the Catechism, I think more than any other of the Fathers of the Church. The Fathers of the Church were the, um, the ones who wrote in the early centuries of the Church about the teaching of Jesus. But his influence goes on even today. And, but but he, he had this, he always wanted to try to figure out the Blessed Trinity because he just had this type of mind that always wanted to figure things out. And so he was always puzzling over the mystery of the Blessed Trinity. How could God be, how could God be three persons in one God? And so there's a story that he was walking one day by the sea, which probably was the Mediterranean Sea because he lived in North Africa. And as he was walking along by the sea, he saw a young, a young boy was playing beside the sea. And he had dug a hole in the sand. And he kept going over to the sea with a bucket. And he would fill the bucket with water. Then he'd go back and pour the bucket of water into that little hole. And so Augustine said to him, what are you doing? And he said, oh, well, I'm trying to empty the sea into this little hole. And Augustine said, you're never going to be able to do that. And it turns out the boy was actually an angel. And, and the angel said to him, well, you're never going to be able to figure out the Blessed Trinity either. And so it was a lesson, to, um, a lesson of humility to St. Augustine that the human mind has its limits and very much limited compared to the infinite God. 
but but that do, that shouldn't discourage us because the more we learn about God, the more we see how beautiful he is. And the more we understand his beauty, the more we love him because our minds were created to know and love God. So, but Augustine thought of this way of thinking about the Trinity. And he said, he believed that the Trinity is just like love itself. He thought of the persons of the Trinity as the lover or the one who loves, the beloved or the one who is loved and love itself or the loving relationship that's shared between them. So if you think about someone who loves you like your mother or your father, okay, your mother loves you and you love her. So, so you, you both love each other, but, but, and the love between you is a real thing. It's real, but it's not either of you. And so that's a way of thinking about the Holy Spirit, who is the love between the father and the son. This helps us to understand that the Trinity is like a family. A husband loves his wife and the wife loves her husband. Now, it's only like a family because everything that we compare God to on earth falls short of God because God is spirit. And so we can't really understand God through matter, but, but it helps us to be able to draw closer to the mystery is the way you might understand it. And the family is really the, the highest comparison we have of the Blessed Trinity. A husband loves his wife and the wife loves her husband. The children are a sign of the love they share for each other. God calls us to share in the love of the Trinity. He wants to pour out his love on us. And that's what he does through the sacraments. He, he pours out his love and his life. Sanctifying grace is a share in the life of God, which you first received at baptism, but which will be greatly increased every time you receive Holy Communion worthily. And every time that, and especially um, at the moment of your confirmation. Confirmation you only receive once in your lifetime, but it imparts a, a seal on your soul. A seal is like, like a mark of ownership. Like the Holy Spirit is saying, you belong to me. And now I'm going to pour out all of my gifts on your soul. And I'm going to lead you to eternal glory. That's the gift of confirmation. So we're invited to share in God's communion of love. And that's why we were created was to share in that communion of love. We're called back into love. We're created out of love and called back to love. That's why life on earth is so important that we learn to love God and love one another because if we don't, we won't receive, we won't um, complete our mission on the earth because each one of us was created at this time and into the particular family you were born into for a certain mission that nobody else can do. And it all has to do with loving God and loving other people, the other people he puts in your life, but only you can do it in your own special way. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm gonna stop there because now you have questions for you to answer on your own. And you also have a picture to draw, a picture of how you can show yourself loving God and how you can show yourself loving your neighbor. And then there's a quiz you can take about the Blessed Trinity. So either your parents can let me know if you finished it in your workbook or you can complete it online and then I'll be able to see that you answered the questions. So either way is fine with me as long as you complete the work. Because, you know, of all the subjects that you study, there's never going to be a more, more important subject to study than God. Because God is our purpose. He, he created us out of nothing. He holds us in being and he's calling us back to himself. So we need to know that. Otherwise, we can go through life like sleepwalkers, you know? Like one time my sister, um, she got up in the middle of the night and she was sleepwalking and she started to make a sandwich, you know? And my mother came into the kitchen and said, what are you doing, Kathy? And um, she, said, she said, I'm making my lunch, you know? Like, what do you think? And I mean, it was like midnight. And so she wasn't awake, you know? But um, sometimes people go through life like that, like, they don't even know what they're doing. I mean, they don't know why they're here or where they're going. So don't be like that because God is giving you this opportunity. He wants you to become great saints, great, great saints who bring multitudes of souls with you into the heavenly kingdom. So let's 
close our class by praying a Hail Mary that God will bring this about in each one of us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, thank you very much. Good job.